Dragon Masters, Land of the Spring Dragon, by Tracy West. Chapter 1, Hope for Bracken. Drake couldn't stop thinking about what had happened to the kingdom of Bracken. Images flashed through his mind. Tall trees snapped in half. Fields, once green with crops, now cracked and crumbled. Wood from broken houses scattered across the dirt. A few hours before, an earthquake had struck. An evil wizard named Muldred had controlled a powerful dragon called the Naga. He'd ordered the Naga to attack Bracken. Drake and a team of dragon masters had stopped Muldred, but not in time to save Bracken. The earthquake had destroyed the crops. That meant the whole kingdom could go hungry. We need to fix our land, Drake thought. I will do whatever it takes. Drake, are you listening? Asked Griffith, the king's wizard. Sorry, Griffith, Drake said, coming out of his thoughts. Drake and two other dragon masters, Petra and Rory, were with Griffith in his workshop in the bottom of King Roland's castle. Petra was reading aloud from a book. Continue, Petra, Griffith said. Everyone, listen closely. We may have found a way to rebuild Bracken. Petra nodded, her blonde curls bouncing. Every year, when winter ends, the spring dragon brings spring back to the land of Inispan Ba, she read from the book. This dragon is connected to nature. She makes plants grow. That's perfect, Rory said. Maybe this spring dragon can make the crops in our kingdom grow back. We'll have to go to Inispan Ba and ask the spring dragon for her help, Drake said. Finding this dragon might not be easy, Petra said. The book says she lives in a world hidden inside Inispan Ba. The only one who can enter this world and find the dragon is our dragon master. Then we shall find the dragon master, Griffith said. The wizard opened a box card with pictures of dragons. The large green dragon stone glittered inside. Griffith waved his hand over the stone. Show me the dragon master of the spring dragon, he said. The dragon stone began to glow. Green light shot out of it. I wonder what this new dragon master will be like, Drake thought. A picture appeared inside the light. A girl with curly red hair and freckles stood in a field of wild flowers next to a stone well. Her green eyes looked through wired spectacles, and like the other dragon master, she wore a piece of the dragon stone around her neck. We found her, Drake cried. Chapter 2 A New Dragon Master The red-haired girl's eyes narrowed. Who said that? She asked. Petra gasped. She heard us. Drake had seen the dragon stone work before. You could see and hear the dragon master inside the green beam of light, but the dragon master usually couldn't see or hear you. Griffith's eyes widened. This is very unusual. The well must be some kind of portal, he muttered, stroking his long white beard. The girl looked into the well. I can see you in the water. She said, I see one skinny wizard and three dragon masters. Why are you spying on me? We weren't spying on you, Drake replied. We need your help. Our kingdom was hit by an earthquake. It destroyed our crops. We read that the spring dragon can make plants grow, Petra added. Can you bring her here to fix our crops? Rory asked. The girl's eyes twinkled. Do people in your land not know the word please? She asked. Please, can you help us? Drake asked. That is not up to me, she said. That is up to Faulin. Is that your dragon's name? Petra asked. The girl nodded. Yes, and I'm Breen, she answered. I am Faulin's dragon master, but Faulin is not like other dragons. She belongs to everyone who lives in Inispanba. Even though I am her master, I cannot command her to leave this land. She must decide that on her own. Just then, Breen's dragon stone glowed green and she shut her eyes. Drake knew that she was hearing her dragon's voice inside her head. Faulin says she will see one brave dragon master, she said. Rory frowned. Just one? Very few humans are allowed in Faulin's hidden world, Breen answered. Drake shall go, Griffith said. His earth dragon, Worm, can transport there in a flash. There is no time to waste. You'll find me in Maeve's meadow, Breen said. Then the green light faded. Drake's stomach fluttered. He and Worm had traveled to faraway lands before, 
but Drake had always had at least one friend with him. Petra touched Drake's arm. Don't worry, Drake. You can do this, she said. Rory smiled. Go bring us that dragon and save Bracken. I won't let you down, Drake promised. Drake left the wizard's workshop. Worm was waiting for him. We need to go to Inispanba right away, he told his dragon, to meet a dragon master named Breen in a place called Maze Meadow. Can you get us there? Worm nodded, and Drake put his hand on Worm's scales. Let's go, Drake cried. He closed his eyes as a bright green light flashed. Chapter 3 The Test When the light faded, Drake opened his eyes. Worm had transported them to a field of wild flowers. Breen stood by the well that the dragonstone had shown them. Breen walked over to Drake and his dragon. She looked up at Worm. Hello, Worm, she said. That's an unusual name for a dragon, isn't it? But I can see why Drake named you that. Then she turned to Drake. Hello, Drake, she said. Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you too, Drake said. It's nice that you and your dragon are going to help us. Now don't get ahead of yourself, Breen said. Before Faelene will agree to help you, you must find her. Can you just take me to her? Drake asked. Breen grinned. That will be too easy, she said. To find Faelene, you'll have to use your courage and your wits, and you'll have to leave Worm behind. Drake's mouth dropped open. What? he asked. Why? You need to do this on your own, Drake, Breen replied. Besides, there is only room for one dragon in the fairy world. Drake's dragonstone began to glow. He looked at Worm. I wasn't expecting this, Worm, Drake said inside his head. You will be fine, Worm promised him. I will be here when you return. Drake turned to Breen. Okay, I'm ready. I just hope it doesn't take too long to find Faelene. We need to get back to Bracken soon. How long it takes depends on you, Breen told him. I can get you started, but the rest is up to you. Now, let the challenge begin. Breen skipped across the field, whistling a tune. Chapter 4 The Fairy Mound Drake followed Breen to a small, grassy hill. This is a fairy mound, Breen explained. I've heard of that, Drake said. My mother used to tell me stories about a secret fairy world. She said the fairy mounds was the way to get in, but I never believed their stories were true. Breen smiled. I bet you didn't believe in dragons either until you saw one. Drake smiled back. No, I guess I didn't. There are many different kinds of fairies in this secret world, Breen told him. She touched her dragonstone and it glowed. Then a hole opened up in the hill. Breen stepped inside and Drake followed her. They passed through a dark tunnel that opened up into a field of flowers. This place looked almost like where they had just come from, but Drake could see that it was different. The sky was strange shade of pink instead of bright blue. The colors on the flowers looked brighter. Welcome to the fairy world. It is similar to our world, but quite a bit different, Breen said. You'll see. Come this way. Drake followed Breen down a path through the meadow. Breen stopped at the start of a forest. The path split in two different directions. Which way do we go? Drake asked. Breen stepped to the side. That is up to you, Drake. Drake looked down the two paths. They both led into the woods. How do I know which path will lead us to Faelene? He wondered. Make up your mind, Drake, Breen said in a teasing voice. Hurry now. Which will it be? Drake took a deep breath. Suddenly he heard voices behind them. He turned to see a group of tiny men, none of them higher than Drake's knees, marched toward them. Each one had a white beard and wore a green shirt, green pants, and a pointy red cap. Here we go, marching on and on, here and there and over and yon, they sang. Drake's eyes got wide. Who are they? he asked Breen. Those fairies are called red caps, she explained. They like marching around a lot. The red caps marched toward Drake and Breen without glancing at them. When they reached the fork in the road, they marched down the path on the right. Then they stopped. All at once, they turned to face Drake. Follow us, they cried. Chapter 5 The Red Caps I think these fairies want to help me, Drake thought. He was about to take a step toward the red caps when he stopped and turned to Breen. I guess you won't tell me if we should follow them or not, he said. No, I can't, Breen said. That would be cheating. But can you tell me something about them? Drake asked. Breen twirled her fingers around one of her curls. I guess so. What do you want to know? 
Well, what kind of fairies are they? Drake asked. Are they nice? They mostly like to march around, she answered. But they do also like to have fun with humans who visit here. Hmm, Drake said. What kind of fun? You're asking too many questions, Drake, Breen said. Choose a path. The redcaps had already begun to march away. Wait for us, Drake called out. He ran to catch up to the fairies. Breen followed him. The red caps marched into the woods. Here we go, marching on and on, here and there and over and yon, they repeated. They marched and marched. Drake kept expecting to reach the end of the woods, but they never did. I think we're going in circles, he said. You're right, Breen agreed. She pointed to a tree with a twisted trunk. We have passed by this same tree three times. Here we go, marching on and on, here and there and over and yon, sang the red caps. Drake frowned. I guess we shouldn't have followed them, he said. Let's go back to the other path. Drake tried to turn around, but he couldn't. His body swung forward and kept marching behind the red caps. His legs were moving all on their own. Hey, Drake yelled. Are the red caps using some kind of fairy magic? He wondered. Drake couldn't slow down or change direction. Behind him, Breen was marching too. They couldn't stop. Drake made his legs move faster. He caught up to the red caps at the end of the line and tapped him on the shoulder. Excuse me, he said, but we would like to stop following you now, please. We need to find Faelin and save my kingdom. The red caps stopped marching. They all turned around and looked at Drake. But you must keep following us, said one. We are having too much fun, said another. Yes, said the third. Going round and round is such a good time. I'm sorry, but I don't have time for games, Drake said. My kingdom needs help. Sorry, one of them said. We can't let you go. You have to let us go sometime, Drake said. How long do you want to keep playing for anyway? The redcaps all answered him at once. Forever! Chapter 6 A Trick The fairies smiled up at Drake. You want me to march with you forever? You can't make me do that, Drake said. His legs were still moving, marching in place. Yes, we can. One of the red caps said cheerfully. Then they all spun around and began to march again. Drake's legs followed them. Here we go, marching on and on, here and there and over and yon. Drake looked at Breen. You could have warned me about the red caps, he said. I did, she replied. I told you they like to have fun. This isn't fun, Drake complained. Breen shrugged. It's fun for them? Drake marched along the path, thinking. I need to find a way to get the red caps to let us go. But all I know about them is that they like to have fun. Fun, Drake repeated the word in his mind. Back home, the younger kids always wanted to pull him away from the field to play games. Games like sticks and stones, hop and skip, hide and seek. Drake tapped the nearest red cap again and the fairies all stopped marching. What is it? The red cap asked. I know a game we can play, he said. It's more fun than marching. The red cap's eyes lit up. More fun? What is it called? It's called hide and seek, Drake replied. You close your eyes and count. Breen and I will hide. When you open them, you have to find us. Ooh, that does sound like fun, said the red cap. What happens after we find you? Then it's your turn to hide, Drake said. The red caps all huddled together. They whispered to one another. Then they turned back to Drake. We will play your game, they said at once. Great, Drake said. First, you have to release your magical hold on us so we can hide properly. Done, the red cap said, snapping their fingers. Drake tested it. He turned and took a step. My idea is working, he thought. He turned back to the red caps. Perfect, one of the red caps nodded. Now, we close our eyes and count, right? Yes, Drake said. The red caps all closed their eyes. One red cap opened his. How high do we count? 10,623. Drake replied. Okay, the red cap said, and he closed his eyes. Then all of the fairies began to count. One, two, three. Drake motioned for Breen to follow him. They hurried back to the fork in the path, away from the red caps. 